Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. It's day seven of the Leak Code Daily Challenge in April. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. And yeah, just a reminder for you to, you know, hit subscribe on my other channel as well for my next video for uh, when to move on from a problem. All right, let's do this. Yeah, hope you enjoyed my intro of just me walking around New York. But yeah, no, no weekly problem. Well, we'll be doing more of these. So definitely, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about, uh, you know, because I think definitely there's a lot of, of school of thoughts. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, let's look. At, apparently, we got another parentheses from today. 678, write a parentheses string. Uh, I'm not going to do a bonus question today because we're doing the contest later. Uh, uh, which is in two hours and 18 minutes. And also if you check that button over there, wish you first to AC, I believe someone told me that it is everywhere. So if you go to contest link, you click on it, you get 10 lead coins. Yay. But yeah, because uh, we'll go over the contest. So, so you know, not going to do, I mean, those are the bonus questions, I guess. So yeah. Anyway, all right, let's take a look. Given that a string is valid, left, right, and star, we turn true if it's valid. Left, right must correspond. That makes sense. Star can be treated as a left or a right or an empty string. Huh. That's kind of... Okay. This looks like an emoji for like a poop or something. I don't know. Anyway, all right. you didn't hear that from me. But never mind. But uh, okay. Hmm. I think... I, I, uh, I am... I mean, I, I think my first intuition, to be honest, is dynamic programming or... Or, you know, some kind of brute force and then you memorize on the dynamic programming. Um, but to be honest, uh, you know, I did peek a little bit at the constraints. The constraints is n is less than or you go to 100, which means that dynamic programming probably should be good enough. But I, I was just like, hey, can I simplify this a little bit more? Like, is there a simpler solution? Right? Because I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I mean, I feel like there is, but I feel like, okay, it's not really that simple, but, uh, I think there are a couple of ways you can think about it. Another way to think about it is not quite strictly dynamic programming, but it is also kind of is dynamic programming, to be honest, if that makes any sense. What I mean is, uh, uh, it, but both of them are kind of brute force, and given that n is equal to 100, like I think this should be okay. So I'm going to write this solution twice. Uh, there, there are two things I want to play around with. They're the same idea mathematically, but you can also think about differently visually right so that they, you know, they c and, and that that's kind of like the cool thing about math sometimes with visualizations and different tools is that you could have two different representation or, or multiple different representation but the code comes out the same because they have the same underlying you know i mean yeah the the correctness is still correct it's just that they have different representation right so I'm, I, I ran seven miles today uh, with a lot of sprint, so I, I'm, I'm just like very dehydrated. So I'm drinking water. Uh, gotta, you know, gotta keep the skin hydrated or something, right? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but okay, so I'm going to write the, what I would say the quote-unquote naive e dynamic programming or memorization, right? The idea here is that and all this builds on everything that we've done the last couple of days. And what I mean by that is that, uh, ooh, this, this is not the thing. That means that on Friday, is it this one? Mm, no, not this one. Wow, we, we've, we've done like four parent slack problems, right? So you have kind of this idea, right? That, um, and the idea here is that for each left parent, you can only go in depth once. That means that if you go, if you are a hundred characters in, your depth can at most be a hundred times, right? And of course, 
there's actually, you know, you can maybe even limit it by 50 because you just can't come back enough or something like this. But for, for the sake of easiness, uh, just say 100, right? So then here we could go, maybe we could call a function. Uh, I'm really bad at naming because the function, so I just type go. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you could name it a little bit better perhaps. But yeah, you have the index for calculate, but for marking the number of characters that we parsed and also the tab, right? So here we index goes from 0 to n. The character, the number, you can also think of it as the number of characters we've processed, right? Uh, tab also goes from 0 to n. Like I said, if you really want to be optimizing, you can also just show n over 2 because it has to come back. Otherwise, it would just always be forced, right? But yeah, it's the, uh, the depth of parents we have to go through, right? And you can maybe even say, like, that's the number of left parents. Okay, so then now, if index is equal to n, then we return true because that means that we matched... Oh, wait, uh, I'm actually wrong on this one. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I got pinged on my watch, so I, I kind of got distracted. But if depth is equal to zero, that means that everything matched, then we return true. Otherwise, we return false, right? <coughs> now, we have a choice. If s index is equal to, well, okay, we, we don't have a choice always, but we have to look at what we get. So if there's a left paren, then we just return go index plus one, depth plus one, right? I'm about to sneeze. I just shoo. Okay, well, maybe one more, hang on. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, allergies. And then now if S of index is equal to close parents, then we can do something like this, but not really, right? Um, because basically if depth minus one is greater than equal to zero, then we could do this. Else we just return force because that means that, well, it's not possible in this thing. And then else, else this is s of index is equal to star. Then now we just try both possibilities. We, we return go index plus one, depth plus one. So this is for left parens. Yeah, same thing here. Um, or depth minus one is greater than equal to zero and go of index plus one, depth minus one, right? So this is basically just this thing. So yeah, so basically we're saying we brute force either trying the left parents or the right parents. And that's pretty much it. Now we can just return go from zero to zero and we can run it real quick. I know memorization, right? Oh, did I mistype something? Oh, I did mistype something. I know memorization, but hang on. Eh, okay, well. Oh, it could also be empty string. I forgot that empty string, sorry. So then now we, we and this is the beauty of writing clean code is that you could just make minor changes. Uh, so then now, uh, yeah, if it's an empty string, you can do index plus one, depth, and that's it. Yeah, now everything is good, but again, we have to memorize because otherwise this thing will branch out a lot. So if you try something like, uh, something like that, maybe that's still fast enough. But Alright, that is actually somehow fast enough. Hmm. Alright, but anyway, my point is that it should time out, right? Uh, I, I just kind of got lazy with banging on the keyboard, but yeah, as you can see. So the the key thing here is noticing, noticing that index is going from 0 to n, depth goes from 0 to n, so we can cache this problem. So as cache is equal to force times, uh, let's just say n plus 1, right? So cache is equal to none times n plus one. Oh, what, what am I doing? I forgot there's two dimensions. I think I just uh, a little bit confused. So, okay, fine. Uh, I mean, same idea. We just have to kind of add one thing. Um, it's two dimension, add one dimension, I guess that's the one thing. Yeah, and then here we can go if has cache index depth, then we return cache index depth, right? And that's pretty much the idea. We, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's mostly the idea. But uh, yeah, the, the uh, it, it's actually uh, the way that I'm doing this is kind of a little bit annoying, to be honest. Now that I see it, but I, I didn't think about it enough when I, I uh, 
when I wrote this, but uh, it's okay. I mean, this is just caching, and you probably could. There, there are cleaner ways to cache, but I just want to show you how one way to change the the result so that we don't have to, um, you know, think about it too much, right? I mean, you can, like I said, there are ways to rewrite this to be cleaner slightly with the caching, but but yeah, but it's just that it would be, I don't know. yeah, and there you go. So 1468 day streak. Um, what's the complexity here, right? So this cause one function, this cause one thing, this cause three things, so it's just all, all of one, right? So this takes all of one, we have all of n square inputs, possible inputs, so each taking all of one, so we have all of n square time, all of n square space, right? So this is one way to do it, uh, this is the dynamic programming, how did I do it last time? I don't, yeah, okay, same idea, that's fine. Um, that was four years ago, almost to the day. Yeah. Time flies, but um, okay. But yeah, what's the other way of doing it that I was thinking about? Well, you could just think, I mean, it's kind of like that. You could think of it like dynamic programming, but it's just about counting the possible, keeping track of possibilities, right? So then you can maybe do something like for uh, C and S, and you know, so then now maybe what's possible? Possible, maybe we'll just put a set of, of um, just zero, which is the, all the depths, possible depths. And then next possible, say, something like this. And here, for if if C is equal to left parens, right? Uh, for P in possible, then next possible dot add uh, P plus one, right? Because now the depth is for each each of the possibilities, we add plus one. If Else, if C is equal to the right parents, we can write for P and possible. Uh, next possible, add P minus 1. Same idea, except for we have to make sure that it is greater than 0. Otherwise, we can't do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then else, for P and possible, we can do two, three things, right? So we can do next possible add p plus one we we could do a parent close same thing right and then we can do a no op really the empty string so this and then at the end just do possible is you go to next possible right yeah oh and then i guess we have to do next possible it should be you go to them yeah okay let's just put this here too late right and that's pretty much it and then now we check to see if zero is impossible because that means that the depth is going to be zero at the end. And there you go. Does that even go to long? Okay. Let's give it a submit. Hopefully I didn't make a silly mistake. But yeah, that was the other way that I was thinking about doing it. Um, the, I think the thing about this one is that it is a little bit trickier to, to prove. Maybe not that much if you saw what we did before, right? But the idea here is that, okay. You see that we have p plus 1, and p minus 1 is not as interesting, but p plus 1, well, we can only go p plus 1 a hundred times because c or s or n is equal to a hundred. So that means that possible only have a hundred possible, uh, that, that's kind of a mouthful, uh, can be at most a hundred, I can contain at most a hundred items. So if this loop is a hundred things and each of these loop is a hundred items at most and we only do it once per per iteration so this is going to be n square as well and for space it's kind of n square space depending on how you want to say it but it's also of n space so it's a little bit better in space because you your maximum space usage is o of n because at most you have 100 items here and 100 items here and then you throw away the rest right but yeah um that's what i have for this one um well just wanted to show another fun way of doing it but yeah, uh, if you're doing a contest later, good luck. But that's all I have for now. So stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.